as if Space Babies wasn't bad enough, Space Babies says hold my beer as we get to experience the second episode in this eight pack of misery inducing dreck expelled like a fountain of putrid vomit right out of the pits of hell. We start in 1929 where this toxic dude is teaching this kid some classic stuff on the piano machine and I wonder, haven't these been cancelled yet? By that I mean classic songs or anything that isn't crap. Oh, just you wait, because everything that existed prior to the brainwashed Zoomers has been cancelled by direct order of the brainwashed Zoomers. They know best, because the rest of us are just old and stupid. Although, judging by the ratings, few people seem to have been stupid enough to be tricked into watching this pile of ass again. Oh no, what will RTD and his friends of destruction do now? Don't worry, Disney is perfectly happy to spend other people's money until they run out of money. Then they'll just find new ways of stealing money. I mean, the BBC's been doing that for years. Henry the Kid says this classical stuff is old and stuffy, as the target audience probably thinks that hip hop or that horrific modern crap that they call music was popular in 1929. Actually, they probably do. If it ain't on TikTok, we just assume. Time to bring in Halsey to make your ears bleed. Then Henry gets into introduced to the devil's cord. Makes sense, as this abomination claiming to be Doctor Who was clearly inspired by Satan. Then the piano slams its lid down on the old dude. Take that, you evil patriarchal bastard! Then something straight out of hell pops out of the piano, and we are introduced to, well, I'll let the image speak for itself. I'm going to refer to this one as Attention Seeker. Also, a special note to the nobody that watched this one, you may want to keep your kids far, far away from this episode. Then Attention Seeker refers to itself as them. You're not even two minutes into the episode, Russell. Whatever. Go on. Then we learn that Attention Seeker is Henry's daddy. Wait. Doesn't that imply a gender? You know what? I can't get into it. It's just gonna make my head hurt. Then Henry disappears, and Attention Seeker refers to itself as Maestro. Yeah, no. No, you're not. You're Attention Seeker. Deal with it. Mommy and Daddy didn't give you enough attention, and now we all have to suffer for it. Then it calls itself music. Well, the ego explodes further. And no, dear, you aren't music. You are further proof that hell exists. Also, how does one identify as music? Man, y'all are really stretching this, aren't ya? Then the old dude's music is set free. Five minutes in and this is horrible! And there's another 45 minutes to go. Hell! I'm in hell! Then, God help us, we cut to Dr. Nutty and Princess Zumi, and Princess Zumi wants to hear the Beatles cut their first album. Probably so they can cancel them for being old and toxic. But I'm not even sure they're sure because the writing in these episodes is a bit of a mess. Dr. Nutty seems grumpy, but then says it's amazing. Oh, this episode sure is amazing, Dr. Nutty, but not in the way you think. We head to 1963, and Dr. Nutty decides to transform into a pimp. Easy there, dude. Then they do a little musical dance, and none of us will look at Abbey Road in quite the same way again. This is gonna be the whole episode, isn't it? Then we learn what the Beatles would look like if all traces of testosterone were removed. It's the Beatles of current year, my friends, as 1963 dies a little inside. Then the masculinity-challenged imitation Beatles sing a song that sounds like something out of 2024. I horrible and there's your plot attention seeker turned music into trash well it's gonna head that way anyway i guess it helps to hurry things along everybody's depressed and miserable so again it's just like 2024 princess zumi says you can't kill music oh yes you can just ask the zoomers then we have a discussion with imposter paul and imposter john and we learn that music isn't supposed to be good and they're just doing this for a grift hmm grifting so kind of like the losers on YouTube that pretend to like this. It seems that the imposter Beatles might have non-terrible music stuck in the back of their heads. They're there, careful now. Allowing anything that isn't beyond horrible on Disney Plus is going to have some serious consequences. That kind of thing simply isn't allowed. Then we learn what happens as imposter Paul tries not to be terrible for a second. And attention seeker shows its face. Don't say I didn't warn you. Then imposter Paul calls Dr. Nutty disgusting. Well... Then we get an environmental message about smog, and Dr. Nutty defiles the first doctor by mentioning his name. Then we mention the time war again, because that hasn't gotten old after two decades, and Dr. Nutty doesn't seem to know if his granddaughter was killed. Even though Dr. Nutty mentioned that he was the last of the Time Lords every five minutes in the last episode. So which is it? Are you or aren't you? Also, just a question. Isn't the simplified male-presenting Time Lord still in 2024? 
Get your facts right! Then Princess Zumi plays a song on the piano. She says it's about her girlfriend getting dumped by her girlfriend. Everybody likes her song because Princess Zumi is the center of everything because it's not like the show has ever done this kind of plotline in the past. Then people start crying. Well, don't expect any sympathy for me. You were the ones who decided to appear in this crap. But then, the piano gets mad as it doesn't want to be here either, and out pops Attention Seeker, and everyone loses their appetite as Attention Seeker proceeds to block everyone on Twitter. Can't have anyone speaking up about the message after all. Then Dr. Nutty gets scared and says he has to hide, and I'm forced to ask, is this actually supposed to be a plotline, or is this just what happens when arrogant, self-entitled asshats are confronted with something scary, also known as reality, like the truth about how your show is a disaster, and nobody likes you because you're a dick. Then attention seeker starts to ham things up as if this episode wasn't horrible enough already and it's not very happy about princess zumi's piano playing oh come on it wasn't that bad it seems attention seeker owns music well you lot seem intent on taking over and destroying everything so why not just take the music and end the episode already then dr nutty mutes attention seeker's voice and for the first time i find myself actually approving of something that he's done because the sound of attention seeker's voice was like nails on a chalkboard mixed in with a sonic representation of Satan's asshole. But it doesn't last very long and we are soon reintroduced to the sounds of hell and we all become envious of this old woman who's exited the show with the help of Attention Seeker. Dr. Nutty then says he can't defeat Attention Seeker because fighting with the toy maker already caused him to split apart at the crotch and who would want to ruin that fancy suit? Then Princess Zumi tells Dr. Nutty that music hasn't been destroyed because she listened to Beyonce in the future. Really, on top of every everything else, this episode is claiming that that drivel is music. Then Dr. Nutty brings Princess Zumi back to 2024 and things ain't looking so good. Well dear, this was sure to happen in the future anyway. Just ask Bill. Also, once again, Disney, why do these effects look like they're out of 1999? I'm starting to become a bit suspicious about what's being done with all that Disney money. It seems that without music, the human race goes sour. Well, I for one could do without Beyonce. Next, Attention Seeker's on the piano and starts playing a little ditty. Well, as long as it doesn't start talking again, then it starts talking again. Then it starts singing about daddy being mean and I start praying for death. It seems the sound of music has been feeding Attention Seeker. Well then, just introduce it to Cole play that's sure to poison it to death also attention seeker is the son daughter i really don't care of the toy maker really neil patrick harris you're to blame for this i mean come on dude you used to be cool see hollywood elites this is what happens when you overindulge your kids it seems that a different combination of notes will vanquish the evil corn. Where's corn when you need them? Corn could solve this. Then we head back to 1963 and Princess Zumi gets dragged away by some musical notes because she's the only human left with music in her heart. Then Princess Zumi starts singing the magical hidden song. Then we revisit the episode known as the Abomination on Christmas Day to remind us of how special Princess Zumi is as Russell continues to set up his arc that nobody actually cares about, including the people that claim to care about it. Yes, how shocking. Then we have a musical battle between Attention Seeker and Dr. Nutty with Princess Zumi accompanying, and I'm once again reminded that I'm in hell. Then it seems Dr. Nutty can't find the mystery note, and our punishment is hearing Attention Seeker wail for another few minutes. Well, it sucks Dr. Nutty and Princess Zumi into its magic drum. But then, what's this? It's Imposter John and Imposter Paul, and they've come to save the day. Imposter George and Imposter Ringo are nowhere to be seen as they've already run away screaming from this atrocity. As Attention Seeker reminds us that the one who waits is almost here and I'm reminded once again that I don't care. Then we finish off with a full-scale musical number because of course we do. Why would anything surprise us at this point? I wonder what William Hartnell would say if he found out that his show would turn into a full-blown musical one day. And what nightmare awaits us next week? Tune in to find out because it's not like I have anything better to do. That's it for today. Follow me on X, and until next time, suck it.